You're listening to The Upland Rookie, a podcast presented by Upland Brits and Final Rise. Hey, what's going on, rookies, and welcome to episode 45 of the Upland Rookie Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Final Rise. If you're just getting started or a seasoned Upland hunter and looking at some new gear for this fall, I'd highly recommend checking out the Final Rise systems. I've owned my Summit vest for about three years and I have had it through many bird hunts, training sessions, Nastra events, and I have beat this thing to the ground. It still is in the same condition as the day it showed up on my doorstep. American made vest designed by a guy who is just like all of us. Give Final Rise a serious look at finalrise.com. Trinity Bretons is the home of the Epignol Breton, also known as the French Brittany. All Trinity Breton dogs are from champion bloodlines that are field tested and family approved. For over 33 years, Trinity Bretons has worked to offer you the best bred Epignol Breton in the country. Check them out at trinitybretons.com. Also on Facebook and Instagram at Trinity Bretons. Gunner Kennels. I've personally used and tested every major kennel brand on the market today. After months of hands-on experience, Gunner is the only kennel I'll use for my favorite bird dogs. Man's best friend deserves man's best kennel. That's a Gunner kennel. A Nook Shook Professional Dog Food is the highest energy dog food in the world. A Nook Shook's dense formulations ensure that your pup in training and your seasoned bird dog get what they need to succeed in the field. A Nook Shook works hard so your dogs can work harder. Check them out at anookshookpro.com. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Hey, I hope you're having a great week so far, and I hope you have been getting out there with your dogs. Um, Something I talk about quite a bit on the show is just conditioning your dogs. Um, Y'all know I I bike with my dogs quite a bit. Um, Gage has has really figured out the whole biking game, and a win, eh, that's a different story right now. (laughs) We're we're just getting started, uh, getting her used to the bike, getting her running out front, and so um, definitely got some more work to do with her, but um, it's never too late or too early, I guess, to start uh, getting your dogs worked. Um, Again, the bike works for me, doesn't work for everyone. Um, I'll do a another episode on uh, kind of some of the do's and don'ts of, of biking your dog because there are some things to be aware of, um, like not running on you know concrete or cement for a long time. Um, there's some implications with their joints and paws and things like that. And so um, also it's just kind of dangerous. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it, it can be a little sketchy, but you got to have a dog that uh, is used to it, that's comfortable with it, and it takes time. It takes time to, to build up to that. And so, um, yeah, I, sorry, I didn't mean to start the show with this, but uh, we're kind of going there. So I, I will do a bonus episode is on my list to get out. I'm just kind of doing a little bit deeper dive into uh, my bike setup and getting the dogs comfortable and, and running them on the bike because for some people that works great. Um, the more, the more dirt roads you can find, the better. The more gravel you can find, the better. It's going to be better on their paws, their joints, all that good stuff. And so, um, anyways, I've been doing that um, here with my, my dogs here, getting them conditioned, ready. Um, they've been looking good. Their, their weight's been really good. I've been tracking that uh, once a week. I'll do a, a weight check-in with them, and uh, it's been really good. They've been on the, the Anuk Shook now for quite a while, and they've been looking good fantastic and so um good stuff there i am also going to give gage a haircut this week and so i'll uh i'll I'll throw a photo up there um on the old instagram in a couple days but uh we had my clippers broke and so i I gave him a half cut the other day and then the clippers broke and so he looks a little funny right now but uh, i'm gonna give give him a little little summer buzz uh here in a couple days and so that'll be 
interesting. <laughs> poor, poor dude looks kind of kind of goofy right now. But, um, anyways, what are what are you guys working on right now? Uh, it is June 2022, and I know. You know, we got July, August, and September 1st is going to be rolling around here really soon. And I want to know, what are you guys working on with your dogs? What are you going through? Uh, training, conditioning, maybe you picked up uh, a new pup. Uh, shoot me a message. Uh, email me, uplandbrits at gmail.com. Shoot me a message on Instagram. Uh, whatever it might be, I would love to, to hear from you guys and kind of what, what you're experiencing right now, whether it's training or you know, what, what some of your goals are, um, coming up for the summer here, because we are in summer. Kids are off school. It's crazy. And, uh, it's a good time of year. It's a good time of year. I'm excited. Uh, I like this time of year. It's, it's fun. There's a lot to, lot to do longer, longer days, which is always nice. Um, Hey, want to mention uh, a couple things. Uh, I announced last on uh, last week's episode. Um, I started a uh, Patreon page, and so uh, have a couple people that signed up to be patrons. So thank you, thank you guys so much. Um, part of me was like, "Is anyone going to sign up for this?" And within a couple days, I had three or four people uh, sign up to be patrons. So thank you guys so much. Um, it really means a lot to me uh, to have you, you know, showing that kind of support for the show. So if you're liking the show, you want to be a Patreon member, there are some some cool perks and bonuses um, that you'll have to check out on the Patreon page. Um, if you scroll down on the Patreon page, you'll see some goals I have set. And so uh, there's some, some goals. So like once I hit, I think it's 15 or 20 uh, Patreon members uh, or Patreon patrons. <laughs> once I hit that many Patreon Patreon patrons. Um, I'll, I'm going to do a giveaway. I have a $100 on X uh, elite membership card that I'm going to be giving away here. And so then after that, there's another goal. I think I hit 50 patrons. I'm going to start doing bonus episodes for Patreon members. Um, and then there's another goal. I think it's 100 yeah, I think it's 100 Patreon members. Um, I am going to be giving away some products from Gunner kennels so uh <clears throat> you're gonna want to get in on that and again you you can read all the details and what that that looks like over on the patreon page the upland rookie podcast go search that over there so uh last thing is i talked about our reviews last week and we are so close to 100 on apple podcast we i think we're at 97 i think 96 97 uh so here's what we're gonna do if uh you need to go go over to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and review, uh, screenshot that, send it to me. I'm going to send you out a sticker. Um, I have a couple more Upland Rookie Podcast stickers available. So go leave a review. Once we get to 100, uh, so if we're at 97 right now, the next you know five people or get us over 100, send me your screenshot, and uh, I'll pick the first you know five people. And I'll send you out some stickers. So uh, let's try to get over 100. Uh, we're super close. <laughs> so uh, leave a rating and review. Send me your screenshot of your review. And uh, I'll pick the five, just five random random people, uh, you know, that gets over 100. And I'll mail you out a sticker. So sweet deal. But that uh, yeah, would be pretty cool to get over 100. So Anyways, guys, um, we're going to dive into today's episode. I got Hunter from Chasing Coveys. Uh, Hunter actually just uh, recently started a podcast as well, the Chasing Coveys podcast. And uh, uh, Hunter's, Hunter's one of those guys who's he's putting some boots on the ground. He's working dogs. Um, he's, he's grinding. He is grinding for sure. And, uh, it was fun getting to know him a little bit more and, uh, just kind of, uh, you know, again, down South, I've had a couple now, a couple guests now in the last month or so from Georgia and, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, things like that. And so it's been fun to, um, hear a little bit more of the kind of the heritage and the history of, uh, you know, the Southern quail hunting, the pointers are very popular and uh, so it's been fun. It's kind of an accident. I had that many uh, guests from the South, but I think it's pretty badass. And so um, anyways, I hope you enjoy this episode and uh, take care, guys. Well, you'll, I'll, yeah, I'll talk to you in the outro. I don't know. Hunter, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and put us on a map. Uh, where are you talking to us from? All right. Uh, so my name is Hunter Pervat. Um, 
of Chasing Coveys on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Um, I am located in Sanford, North Carolina, uh, which is right in the middle of North Carolina. So right in the right in the heart of the Southeast, and we are literally the dead middle of North Carolina. <laughs> nice. Um, Grew up a little bit, I guess, a little bit about me. Um, I'd be 30 this year. Um, I am new to bird hunting or new to upland hunting. Um, I've been at it now for, this will be my third season, this next next season, my third season. Uh, It'll be my second season with multiple dogs. Uh, My first first year, I only had one dog. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into all that later. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, just, I mean, I I'm one of those people that once it, uh, once I find a hobby, I go all in. And, uh, as you can, as you can tell, it's definitely happened with the, with the bird dogs. <laughs> that's, that's fun, man. I could definitely, uh, definitely relate going all in and, and just getting kind of, uh, kind of caught up in it. It kind of sweeps you in quickly and becomes, uh, something you, you live, br- live, breathe and sleep. So I get it. Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. That's awesome, man. Well, I am excited to uh, unpack your story a little bit more, get to know you. Uh, a couple, couple things though, I got to ask. First off, uh, you looks like you installed a deck system in your truck today. How'd that go? Good. Uh, went really quickly. Uh, it's the second one I've done. Uh, okay. I had a truck before that I sold that just wouldn't wasn't going to fit into the new truck that I got, so I had to switch models. But uh, okay. pretty easy. Yeah. Um, my wife helped me and we got it done within like an hour and a half. So, oh, so. Well, that's, that's good, man. That's good. I, I, I installed one myself and I, uh, and the second one I had, I, I had paid someone to do it. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It was just, it was such a pain. The first one I installed though, I installed in like the middle of a blizzard and it was like 15 degrees outside. <laughs> it just was not good. The first one that I did, uh, my buddy Jordan, who, uh, like I said before, has been on this journey with me. Um, uh, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if the truck bed was a little wonky, but like, I mean, we had all kinds of things. Like I had to end up going by like a three quarter inch sheet of plywood to put up underneath it to oh, get geez. it to level. And <laughs> it took us like six and a half hours and it was like 95 degrees that day. And I was like, yeah, that's not, <laughs> <laughs> not going to do that. <laughs> that's brutal. That's brutal. Uh, and also how's the, uh, how's the podcast going? And then you, you started a podcast pretty recently. Uh, how's that endeavor been? Yeah. Um, so we've done, done a couple episodes. I think we've released three now. Um, we've got, I think three more recorded or something, but, uh, it's good. Um, the biggest challenge with it is just, just finding the time to do it. Um, I mean, I work five days a week with my normal job. I've got another part-time job that I'm working with, uh, a professional dog trainer with, uh, so it's just finding the time to do it. I mean, everybody's been great. You know, anytime I've reached out to anybody, everybody's like, yeah, we'll do it. Just got to find the time to do it and get it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, it's definitely, definitely a, the struggle is real finding that time and with between family and work and, and all that good stuff. It's, it's definitely something you gotta, you know, carve out that time for. It's tricky. Yeah. It can, uh, I mean, it's been great. You know, the people that I've gotten to talk to, um, for the most part, you know, we started out doing guys that we've already known we've funded with, or sure. we've met through AKC stuff or whatever the case may be. Um, but last or earlier this week, we sat down with Mike Nadusky of Pheasant Forever and Quill Forever. Um, and I've, I mean, I've talked to Mike a bunch of times on Instagram and things like that, but sure, it was good to actually be able to, you know, put a name and a face together and, and sit down and chat with him. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's really cool. Well, um, so, so you mentioned you're a, you're a new bird hunter, been at it about, about three years or so. What, uh, what kind of got you into this? What led you down this path of, of getting into the uplands and, and then getting into your own dogs? So I guess I was, I grew up hunting, fishing, um, with dad and grandpa, uh, mostly deer hunting, um, you know, and things like that, fishing a lot, um, and then, you know, obviously you go away to college, move away for a job, you know, that kind of takes a backseat. Um, then once me and my wife got married, um, I had always seen pictures of short hairs, like not necessarily even on point, like hunting short hairs, just short hairs in general. Like, so my first, first dog with a short hair, uh, I got him, I guess I was your typical apartment short hair owner. I, uh, <laughs> didn't do any hunting. Um, or bird hunting at the time. I was still deer hunting a little bit here and there, but sure. um, 
once I got him, you know, I had him for I think about 14 months or so. And then uh, it got to the point where he was, you know, tearing up the house, running <laughs> crazy. I mean, just nonstop energy. And I got to the point where me and my wife sat down and we were like, we've either got to figure out what we can do to get this dog's energy out or we're going to have to get rid of them. I was like, well, I'm not getting rid of them. So I started looking into like local trainers and like, uh, you know, local preserves and started researching kind of what type of hunting I could do with them. And it just kind of, it's quickly evolved from there. <laughs> so the dog, the dog kind of, kind of brought you into this, this bird hunting thing. Cause it sounds like. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it was one of those things like, I love the dog. I love his personality. He was just, he was wild. I, what, I didn't really know what to do with him. And I was just, you know, like I said, I was, I was in a good enough position with, with my job that I was starting to have time off and I was like, all right, it's time for a new hobby anyway. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right time. How, how was that transition taking, uh, taking that what 14 month old dog and, and then you, you know, just figuring out, you know, uplands and birds, like what was that transition like? What was that experience like, uh, for you, you know, get, just getting into it. Like, do you just start going? Did you just like, what, what was your process like getting into it? So I guess that my, my journey kind of would have started just before like COVID hit. So it would have been like early 2020, like February ish. Okay. Um, and down here in the Southeast, most of your preserves, um, can stay open until the first of April. Um, so it gives you the wild bird season goes out the last of February. So it gives you a little extra time there. Um, basically what I started doing was I found a trainer. Um, I found Grayson Geyer, Lost Highway Kennels um, in Winston-Salem. I went to him, got a couple of one-on-one -on -one lessons with him, mm, kind of nice. like, hey, you know, what do I need to do? You know, and then from there, I just, Pretty much, I started going to preserves, trying to find somewhere I could train, anywhere I could train, and then just just kept grinding with it. Um, and then eventually, I joined a pointing breeds club where I had property to train on pigeons and that type of stuff. Nice. Sounds like sounds like you jumped in pretty fast and just went you know right to hey, let's someone show me the rope, show me how to do this, and and then sounds like you kind of DIY styled it from there. Yeah, pretty much. I mean. Um, once we got to training and once he got to where he would at least point and hold a bird and let me flush it, uh, at that point I had no intentions of hunting or trialing or testing or anything. I was, just, all right, we're going to go hunting now. So, uh, I had met my buddy Jordan, uh, cause I had just started a new job right before COVID started. Uh, I met him and I started explaining to him kind of what I was doing he started going with me to the preserves because obviously it's a lot easier to, to work a dog with two people instead of one. And even though we both had no idea what we were doing, <laughs> <laughs> um, we were hunting over a dog that probably definitely shouldn't have been hunted over. Um, <laughs> but but uh, you, you, you learn those things after the fact. Yeah, exactly. You know, hindsight's always 2020 when you don't yep. know what you're doing. Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, after that, um, you know, once we got him to where he would point and hold a bird, uh, I was like, all right, now we've got to figure out like where can I actually hunt this dog? Sure. So over the summer we researched and, you know, I kind of fell in love with the way the rough grouse and woodcock hunting was in Michigan and Minnesota and up in the North woods. And we picked a spot on Onyx, me and Jordan drove overnight one night, hunted three or four days and we had never, <laughs> never been up on hunting. We had never seen that. That's that. awesome. Was that, so was that your first wild bird experience? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Good for you, man. <laughs> we, uh, I looked at him one day and I was like, you know, we're going to do it. Let's do it. Like, you know, I was like, I don't know anything about any of these birds. Like yeah. I've seen it well before, but like other than that, like I know they call the rough grouse the king. So let's go yeah. find out why. <laughs> let's, let's go find it. Let's start our adventure. <laughs> I mean, kudos to you, man, for, for, you know, you probably had every excuse in the world to, to not to make that trip. And, you know, you're in North Carolina, you've never hunted birds before, new dog, new hunters. Like, so kudos for just, you know, just deciding to go for it. That trip right there was, uh, it was worth more than anything in the last, well, Obviously, as I've grown to know more and more, like 
that trip was such pivotal for us because we learned so much you know, with the dog, with us being, you know, I never even hunted out of state any yeah. at, at all. I mean, so yeah. being able to go there, you know, with your own dog on public land, yeah. you know, and really before I started up with hunting, I didn't really hunt on public land. You know, mm. I was, all my deer hunting was on private land. So sure. Getting exposed to that world was definitely an, an interesting turn too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's the thing, man. It's, I mean, so many of us, myself included, when I was starting out, I mean, I would like, we consume and we read and we listen and we, we try to, uh, you know, under learn more about, you know, hunting or whatever it might be, but until your, your boots are on the ground and you're in the space on the land behind your dog, like that's just such valuable uh, I think learning for us all, like you're going to learn the habitat and the bird temperament and learn, learn more about your dog and, and their body language. And so I think that's such a valuable, uh, valuable aspect of just getting, getting out there and, and seeing it for yourself. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we learned so much on that trip. Um, didn't harvest the grouse. We killed a, um, killed a few woodcock, harvest a few woodcock. Um, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and, I mean, and that, did you just have one dog in the trip? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At that point I had only had Jordan didn't have any dogs at that point, And, uh, I only had, uh, my male GSP Teddy. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. What, uh, what was, so what, that was your first season. That was what, about three years ago, you, you think? Yeah. So that, well, that would have been the fall of 2020 going into 2021. Okay. Okay. So then fast forward a little bit to, I guess that would have been what last season. Yeah. Last season. 21. Like how was, how was that season for you? uh do you make any big trips like what was that what was that second season like for you yeah so uh kind of backtrack just a little bit but give you like a background of north carolina hunting yeah me, yeah my first my first year um i hunted all year i don't know the exact number of times i hunted i would say probably 20 25 times here in north carolina quail hunting um i found two coveys of birds okay uh, I found one uh, the first day I went, uh, I had been on the truck two minutes and Teddy went on point and we found one, a oh, wow. uh, couple of birds. And then after that, I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then got served humble pie for the rest of the season. Um, going into last year, um, last year we started the season. We went to South Dakota uh, for the first I guess that would have been the last week of October. We went to South Dakota chasing pheasants. Uh, um, well, we chased pheasants most of the day that week. Um, we tried to get in some sharp tails. We hunted sharp tails a couple or one day of the week. Uh, no luck. Uh, we found one covey, but just too far, wild flushed on us. Sure. That was a definitely a, a very interesting experience. Uh, <laughs> you know, I had never been, I guess at that point, west of Michigan. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, so it was, you know, beautiful landscape, a um, lot of learning, you know, never hunted pheasants before, especially for wild ones. Sure. Uh, with the way they run with the dogs. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a good week. We learned a lot. That's good. Were you hunting mostly uh, public land or did you get any private access? No, we hunted all public land, um, you know, used Onyx, kind of found their spot, just went with it. Um, yeah. Then we came back, um, North Carolina last year. We, so I went from two coveys my first season to 16 this past season. Oh, we wow. averaged, averaged almost two coveys a day on one piece of public land. And then on the other one, we averaged just over one. Okay. Okay. Days we hunted. Is there, so you, I think you're my first North Carolina guest. So congrats on that. <laughs> Um, is so, so catch me up on, on a little bit more about North Carolina. Is there a lot of public land? Is it pretty ex easy to get to? Like what's, what's it like and what are bird numbers? So there's, like? there's a decent number or a decent amount of public land here in North Carolina. Uh, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Um, it's somewhere like middle of the road when it comes to the United States, as far as public land versus private land. Um, the bird numbers are not good. Okay. Um, I mean, there's no, there's no other way around. <laughs> there's, it. there's no way to sugarcoat it. Yeah. Um, you know, we have woodcock, obviously they're migratory. Uh, sure. so that if the flight's in, you can get into woodcock very, very well. Okay. Um, quail or, you know, if you know the right spots, you can find them. Um, but they're very, very spottish or very 
you know, hot spotted around the, around the state. Okay. Um, it gets a little better as you go eastern North Carolina. Um, sure. But and then we have there's a very very few uh, rough grouse in the mountains. Oh, okay. Now I'm guessing there's not a ton of upland hunters because of bird numbers, or is it a pretty decent? Have you been able to connect with some people around your area? So there's, a, I mean, there's a decent number, um, you know, obviously since I've joined, um, a pointing breeds club here and then I've done some AKC stuff and then, you know, just via Instagram and Facebook, that type of thing. Like I've met up with a decent number of people. Um, you know, I think everybody finds the same struggle. You know, we don't have the habitat here. Um, you know, this is something we talked about with Mike Nadusky of mm-hmm. pheasants and quail forever. It's just, it's not managed as well here. Um, as it is in South Carolina or Georgia or mm. in the Midwest, um, you know, cause I, I hunted Georgia, uh, with Darrell Smith this past season as well. And I mean, going down there, like we have pretty much the same landscape mm. and the bird numbers down there are just ridiculous. Like mm. if you, can, now they're in pockets as well. So I mean, sure. they're not everywhere that you go, but the way they're managed down there in Georgia is, yeah it's just special. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's all about, all about how they're managed and the habitat and landscape. Cause so yeah, I guess it's all about what the priority of the state and all that, all that stuff. But, um, so w- take us through, so it sounds like you, so since you've started this whole, this whole journey, it sounds like you've picked up a few more dogs along the way. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so currently I've got, I've got two short hairs and two pointers. Um, Looking to add more all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that a boy. Um, <laughs> never stop. Never stop. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I've got a, so I've got Teddy is my, well, I guess he'll be four in September. Uh, he's my oldest dog. He is a GSP. He's a white liver GSP. I've got Ann, who is a female pointer, um, who I bought from Darrell Smith. Uh, she was my first complete dog, if you will, uh, okay. finished dog. Um, no thanks to me. I mean, I, I, <laughs> all thanks to Darrell. <laughs> sure, sure. But, um, and then I've got a, another pointer who's maybe 15 months old. Okay. Uh, a male. Um, and then I've got a eight month old short hair female. Okay. Nice. So, so you mix it up between the short hairs and the, and the pointers. What, uh, what you you to both, I guess, both those breeds then? Uh, the short hair is just because of the day. I mean, okay. I've had them. You know, he's my first dog. Um, I think I'll always have a short hair too. Uh, sure. I think with the pointer, um, the more I've become pretty good friends with Darrell um, over the last year and a half or so, uh, and just learning more about the history of quail hunting, especially if you're in the southeast. It's just you run pointers or you run setters. Like that's what everybody runs here. Uh, sure. If you're not doing the the AKC or the NABDA thing, like you're running a pointer or you're running yeah. a setter. It's just, <laughs> just the history behind it. Um, yeah. And it's just a, I love to watch the, the way they run. They're so different compared to a, a versatile breed to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the way they cover ground, they cover so much ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just the, the dogs that I've really grown fond to are, are an all age field trial type dog, which is yeah. a lot for a walking hunter, but, it's uh, it's fun to watch. I, I was gonna say they they got to be pretty to watch because, like you said, the way they the way they're covering ground is is like a top tier athlete. Yeah, I'll never forget like my uh, my female Ann that I got from Darrell. He's like, I was like, why are you getting rid of her? He said she doesn't run big enough for me. <laughs> I said okay. Uh, I'll never. And she's out of uh, Miller Speed now, I think, which is a national champion dog. Okay. Uh, won the national championship in. 2020, I think. So, I mean, an all-age dog. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I remember the first time I dropped her out of the tailgate, she hit like 350 yards, and I'm like, uh, is she going to come back to <laughs> You're like, that's big enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's not that that dog. She's a 150 sure. to 250 yard dog out here in the quail woods. Uh, maybe out west she would hit something a little bit bigger, but sure, it's uh, after not seeing my short hair get past a hundred yards to see something go to three fifties. Uh, sure. <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You're like, okay, what, what did I just do? 
what uh and then so are you are you running the pointers in some akc stuff and are you running the short hairs and more versatile competitions right now and and also how'd you was that was that kind of a goal of yours to start getting into those or did that just come naturally um so i took so teddy my short hair uh, he started he is a junior hunter uh, not as far as i've gotten him right now because last year i'm just focused on on excuse me wild bird hunting um in the fall in the fall i would like to maybe take him to master or senior i don't know i'm debating upon skipping senior and going straight to master Um, he's close enough um by the time the fall comes and then maybe doing some navda stuff with him so yeah i mean i'm doing the versatile thing with the versatile dogs uh, just because you know, as everybody says, you know, it's a way to extend the season a little bit. Uh, it's good to meet people. Um, I don't know how much the NAVDA I'll get to do uh, just because of the way the scheduling works here in North Carolina with work and sure. my hunting trips. Like, I'm going to make more. I want my dogs to be able to find wild birds and then, then to test or trial. Not sure. Obviously, dogs can do both. But yeah, yeah. It's just, if I only get to pick one, I'm, I'm going Yeah, it's, it's all about what you, what you have time for. And yeah, I get it. Um, but with the pointers, yeah. Um, so I recently, about a month ago, um, as you know from this morning, I was running dogs for uh, Mike Hester, who is a very well-known Phil trialer. Um, okay. Has had a bunch of dogs running the national championship. Uh, nice. He's a fairly local guy that I met through Durrell again. Um, he needed some help a couple of days a week and just kind of, so he's kind of showing me the road, showing me nice. how he works puppies to broke dogs to whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. so my goal is to find, I'll probably use my female for it if I don't find another dog. Um, my goal is to start in walking trials in the fall with the pointers and then okay. at some point in the next two or three years, hopefully get into all age shoot or shooting dog and then all age, uh, stakes for the pointers. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome, man. What, how, how this kind of come about? Was this again, just a way to extend the season for you or were there some, uh, yeah, I guess everyone has their own, like, I guess, uh, reason why they want to do trials or tests in that. Was it just to extend the season? Was it to test your dogs or what was it for you? Um, I guess it's a little bit of both. Um, but for the like when I first started testing Teddy, I was like, I wanted to get as many. At first, I thought that I wanted to get as many titles as I could mm. on him. Um, you know, I wanted to have that name that was 20 letters long or whatever <laughs> with the NH1s and all these sure. different, you know, things. Uh, but as I quickly learned, like, it, it's just a good way to meet people to extend the season. Um, they're fun. Um, I mean, I know that a lot of people take them very seriously, but for me, it's just a, a fun way to, to meet people when it's in the season. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. There's been some great, some great people in those, uh, those events and in those circles, you get to meet people you probably never would. And some of those, some of those older, older guys are just so valuable. <laughs> Who, yeah. I mean, the, one of the, my guys that helps me the most with my training, um, as I met him down there, you know, at a AKC junior test. Um, sure. And now I train with it. Well, before I took the second job, I I trained with them every day that I could, you know, yeah. twice a week. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. Um, are you is it kind of random sidetrack? I did you get one of those? Uh, is it Riverstone kennels? Those backing cutout things, or was that? Was that uh, you? Yeah, I do yeah. have one. Okay, um, okay. Some river River Rome kennels here river in uh, North Carolina. Yep. Okay, okay. Uh, are you? Are you, uh, one, do you like it? And two, are you, are you working on backing with your dogs or have you, and what was that process like? Yeah, I love it. Um, it is, you know, I've, everybody's always seen, you know, the white pointer that everybody stands out sure. there, and, you know, um, the wood cut out. Um, but yeah, Joe, I think he's a Joe. Oh, he's going to kill me. Cause I don't know his last <laughs> name. Joe Finney, Finley. Uh, sorry, Joe. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, I met him again at, at an AKC uh, hunt test one day. Um, but, yeah, the the backing dummy is phenomenal. Um, 
it looks as real as a dog on point. That's the thing. Uh, it looks, it looks super. It's like a picture basically. Yeah. Looks- yeah basically like, I don't know. He would have to explain it, but like, it's some type of like photo printed on the, it's not even wood. It's made out of kind of what they make street signs out of, I believe. Is what oh, wow. explained to me. Um, so it's super durable. Um, I have used it a decent amount um, with Teddy um, since I'm trying to take him higher in the, in the mm-hmm. testing there. Um, currently he's the only dog that um, needs backing work that I've used it with. Okay. Um, and my other pointer, she backs naturally. So I don't have to worry about that with her. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, the biggest thing that I've learned with backing is you kind of want it to where a dog when they come, whether it's around the bend, whether it's up over a little rise in the field, uh, you know, they all of a sudden get into a lane where they can see it down or see down the lane and they can see that dog. Like you want to make sure that that backing dummy or the other dog is where they can see it as soon as they hit that moment of Mm. having a little bit of vision. And then uh, it seemed to have made it a lot easier. Um, Working with Mike, um, I watched him do it a few times with the normal backing dummy. And it's, he, he would tell you that it's not anywhere near what a dog would do with a real dog. Like huh, okay. I'd say it's a lot harder to do it with, if, especially if you're by yourself, because I've tried it a couple of times, putting an A on point and then trying sure. to go back to the truck and get oh, Teddy. bringing their dog in. <laughs> yeah. Like it's really tough. Like even though she, you know, she doesn't move, but it's still like you're trying to get the other dog. The other dog's trying to figure out what's going on. Like what's this dog standing there? Um, but I think if you can make it natural, because I worked with uh, another lady as well. Uh, if you can make it as natural as possible, the dogs will, will honor it a lot better. That's awesome. Yeah. I need to, I need to start working on that with uh, my older one gauge. Cause he's, he's pretty uh, oblivious to backing right now. <laughs> yeah. I think my biggest thing that I've learned is like, you can't, you can't manufacture it too much. Like dog, if they they see another dog and there's like three or four people walking around that other dog, they're just going to like not pay you any attention. To yeah. <laughs> They're not going to honor that. <laughs> right. <laughs> or like, screw that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. What do, uh, what else are you, you plan to work on this summer with, uh, with your own dogs? Um, so Teddy would be trying to get him completely broke. Um, he's pretty close. He has that every once in a while where he will look back at me and say, nah, not standing through the, standing through the shot on this one and just take off. Um, <laughs> That for him is just finishing that out. Um, maybe a little bit of retrieving work with him. Um, he retrieves great. It's just a, it wouldn't be a master level retrieve. He's not going to retrieve it perfectly to my hand. Okay. Um, with Anne, it's just keeping her bird exposure up and making sure that she stays true. Um, Cause there was a couple of times I let her get a little loose while bird hunting last year. So mm-hmm. just go back and make sure that she stands to the flush in the shot. Yeah. Um, my young po- male corner, I, I'm actually trying to move him, um, working with Mike. He's, he wants me to get into trialing and if I'm going to get into trialing, he's got <laughs> from Mike's words, he's got the worst looking tail he's ever seen on a pointer. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> he does not have a straight 12 o'clock tail. <laughs> he's got Whoa. a tail that touches his back when he points. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's wow. full on like wow, curled scoring. over. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not very pretty. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, I like the dog. Sure, uh, sure. I think he, I think he'll make somebody a hell of a hunting dog. Uh, yeah, and really, I think he would make if he had the tail, he could make somebody probably a hell of all of his dog because he has got legs on him. I mean, he is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just just visually. <laughs> yeah, he's got a you know. He's out of another national champion dog, uh, yeah. but he's just a an ugly tail dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but, um, but you love him. But you love but, him. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like if I don't get rid of him, I'll use him as a hunt dog. It, it, sure. It'll be great. But um, and then uh, my female short hair, Timber, uh, just more bird exposure. Uh, sure. Do a little bit of. She's been in the water a few times. Continue to do that because I do want to. Um, 
give take her to her NA test here in the fall. So okay. for NAVDA. So oh nice. It'll be my first dog that I've I've kind of dived into NAVDA with. So I'm yeah. gonna see how it goes. So, so yeah, you didn't do any NAVDA yet with Teddy? No, I, I've been to a few like NAVDA training days with him when I first okay. got him. Um, just at that time, like they're always on Saturdays and Sundays and I work in the golf business and mm. like, that's not happening. I'm mm. not going to be off every Saturday or Sunday. Like, sure. <laughs> it's just not going to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the busiest time of the, you know, the week for us. So. Right. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I've, uh, yeah, I haven't d- dived into NAVDA too much. I mean, I've, I've done some of my own research with it, but um, something I've been, I've been curious with. I don't think I would run it just with, again, my hunting style and kind of what I do, but, um, it sounds like a pretty cool. Yeah. They've got some interesting, um, I've hung out with a bunch of people and I mean, this might offend somebody, but they've got some very interesting, uh, rules, I guess you should say. Sure. Uh, especially as you go to your higher level, I, mean, I have no problem with the NAV with the NA test. Sure. Uh, but as you go into the utility test, things like that. So there's some very interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I don't really necessarily agree with, uh, especially oh. when my duck, when my dog goes and finds a duck in a duck search and I get penalized for it basically. But sure. <laughs> doesn't really make sense. Well, cause me. yeah. Cause don't they have to search for it X, like a minimum of a certain amount of time. Right. Yeah. So from, and again, I haven't done any of this. So if somebody, if I misquote, I misquote, but this is sure. from a nav, like a nav guy that's taken his utility test a few times. Um, and pa- he's passed it. Um, the older gentleman that I've, uh, worked with, but yeah, basically, you know, they send your dog, you got 10 minutes to search. If your dog finds a duck and either catches it or chases, starts chasing it around, the clock stops. Huh. So then if the dog brings the duck back or the dog chases the duck around for five, 10 minutes, like none of that counts toward your score. And then huh. if the dog brings the duck back and retrieves it to you, you have to resend the dog and then the 10 minutes start back over it wow <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I that's interesting i did not, not know that yeah, i haven't looked into it too much but yeah that's that's interesting we'll have to uh well yeah we'll have to confirm this i'm sure someone out there is gonna find the rule book and email us yes yeah, so, but, <laughs> yeah. but maybe yeah, we're wrong I mean, and that's okay maybe we're wrong but we're just going off <laughs> yeah again this is i've not read any rule books this is what the gentleman talked to me about because we went and trained it he trained it with me for a couple of days and i was yeah. like all right that's interesting <laughs> yeah and, and that's the thing everyone everyone's got their own event and whether it's akc trials hunt tests nastra navda i mean again you know what what we talked about in the beginning is it's a way to extend the season have fun and everyone's going to have their their own flavor so i'm not knocking it everyone out there listening i'm not knocking nafta <laughs> I think it's great. If you like it, that's great. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, I'm sure the NAVDA people might not like the NASTRA people. Like, you know, everybody's got their own group, you know. Totally. Uh, So there's there's nothing wrong with it. So whatever we find enjoyable with our dogs. And I think that's that's the important thing. Exactly. That's cool. That's cool. Well, awesome, man. Um, I was gonna ask you one more thing about your something, and it it slipped my mind once we started going down the the, uh, NAVDA. (laughs) <laughs> the nav the, the rabbit hole <laughs> i forget what it was but um well that's cool man are you are you kind of planning oh i don't know i was gonna ask you about uh your hunting plans for this fall coming up are you what are you kind of looking at this fall coming up or do you have any kind of things on your list that you'd like to uh yeah so for? we're we're working on it um me and jordan are trying to figure out what we're gonna do i definitely want to i want to go back to michigan really bad um pretty much back to the same area where we started um, just as kind of, I don't know, to pay homage, I guess. I don't know. Just a, it's a, it's a place that will always be special to us. Um, you know, going there on first time and then now we'll actually have, you know, the dog power to actually be able to put some ground. On. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'd like to go there in October. Um, our season here doesn't start here until the weekend before Thanksgiving. Mm. So I'll go there, hopefully go there in October, uh, then hunt here to start the season. And then we're going to go to Kansas the first week of December, uh, chase pheasants, quail, hopefully some prairie chickens. Um, that's my number one target. I don't know. Nice. 
got a lot of research to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You got, you got a few months, you, you got some time. Yeah. Uh, we've started, uh, but it's still, it's, it always seems like at first when you, when you start researching these places, it's like, Oh boy, where do I start? <laughs> you know, what do I do? <laughs> it, it um, can be, it can be overwhelming for sure. Yeah. And then I'll come, come back to North Carolina up for a while, uh, trying to work some things out with Darrell. Um, whether he comes up here, or I go back down to Georgia. Uh, and then we've also talked about maybe even, hitting South Carolina at some point uh, nice. for quail. Nice, man. It sounds like a, sounds like a heck of a season shaping up to, uh, to be pretty cool. I hope so. Um, it'll be a, a lot of traveling. Yeah. <laughs> These gas prices come down. <laughs> oh dude, I know <laughs> it's wild right now. I have like a, a, maybe a person a day, you know, we're messaging online and someone met, mentions the gas prices and it's just like, it's, it's a real thing. Yeah, it's so sad. Like it's sad not to get. We're not going to get political or anything. But like yeah, it's yeah. so sad. Like I see a guy, you know, a guy was selling his dog earlier, like because he said he couldn't, he couldn't go, wasn't going to be able to give it the hunting trips that it that it deserved. Oh gosh, gas prices were too high. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Well, I was gonna say if you're if you're in Kansas, uh, maybe we can uh, give me a shout. Maybe we'll. That's not that's not too far from me, and I usually get a Kansas license every year, so maybe we can work something out. Yeah, absolutely, that'd be awesome. That could um, be fun. Yeah, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna try to plan it somewhere around the first week of December. Nice, nice. Well, that's fun. Hopefully, it's a great season for you. Um, well, last thing I, I kind of like to ask everyone is uh, for the new upland hunter out there, or someone out there who is who's just getting their bird dog. Uh, what's, what's a piece of advice you would give them heading into their, their first season? Maybe they're starting to plan a trip or maybe they're picking up a pup now. What's something you would, uh, you would share with them? Uh, I would definitely say to find somebody that, that can kind of be your mentor. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, they don't have to be an expert. Um, you know, they don't have to be a national champion, this or nav utility or invitational person. Just find somebody that at least has some type of experience um, and that's willing to work with you. Um, and then just be the biggest thing I think that I've found is just be willing to put your time and your effort in with somebody, you know, ask them if you can watch them train or, you know, if you can help them go put pigeons out in the launcher for them, that way they don't have to do it or whatever it is. And then in return, they'll help you out. Uh, other than that, I mean, just, just go do it. Like put the boots on the ground. Like everybody always says it, but like, put yourself in uncomfortable positions and that's where you're going to learn the most from like mm. being out, uh, you know, in a foreign state somewhere you've never been, you have no idea what's going to happen. You don't really know what habitat you're looking for. Like just go do it. You're going to learn a lot more doing that than you are piggybacking all the time. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's, that's great advice. I love that. Well, cool. Um, last, last thing we'll have to end with is our rapid fire section. And, uh, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions and you give me your, uh, your off the cuff answer and we'll wrap this thing up. Um, all right. This is a new question I've been trying out on some people and it's been going well. Okay. So you're my, th- <laughs> my th- you're my third one. I just like to preface that, uh, answer this question. What came first for you? The, the gun, the dog or hunting? Uh, I guess definitely hunting. Um, I mean, I can remember one of my earliest memories was hunting with dad when I was three or four years old. Uh, but then, I mean, I guess the last would be the bird dog for me. <laughs> <laughs> A roundabout, roundabout way. <laughs> yeah. Well, he came last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You got things figured out and then put the, put the right tools in place and, uh, that's good that's good all right uh what gun are you carrying out into the field and why oh so the gun that i carry the most in the field uh i've got a tristar viper g2 or something like that it's a 28 gauge um semi-automatic um why because i shoot it the best uh, <laughs> there you go i'm not the I am not the best shot by any means. Um, you know, when I first started up with it, I did, I wanted to be the, you know, only use double guns and I'll never forget the one 
it was like the second day we were in Michigan. I had a rough grouse jump up in front of me. I mean, it was the chip shot of all chip shots. And I had a brand new side by side and I <laughs> swung and missed twice. <laughs> and after that, I, I didn't take that gun hunting for the rest of the season. <laughs> You're like, I'm not chancing it. Yeah. I'm not chancing it. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Um, how many clays have you ever hit in a row? Oh, God. <laughs> It wouldn't be very high. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can tell you I've missed about 25 in a row before. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that might be a better question for some of us. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it, it would not be very high. I don't know, five to seven, maybe. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll lock that answer in. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be high. All right. Favorite dog breed besides the ones you own? Uh, I don't want a setter. Uh, English setter, bad. English, okay. Yeah, I don't want to English that are bad. Okay. I've started to run a lot of them with Mike Esther, the uh, with the gentleman that the field trials a lot. And I, I really want one. Nice. Okay. I can I can tell you really want one bad. I can tell when someone really wants a dog. <laughs> there <laughs> there really, will be one in my kennel. Yeah. Hopefully before hunting season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> you, had that, you had that look in your eye. Oh man. Um, okay. Uh, state you ha- haven't hunted but want to the most. That's tough. Uh, I'm not going to say Kansas because I'm going there in the fall. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere that I, I haven't been able to go yet. Uh, or, or not going to be able to go this year. I would say probably a wild week in Montana. Okay. Uh, never never seen the, the big sky country and I saw your video earlier today. Like, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I want to do that. Like that, was, that. That, was, that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> was that in Wyoming? Or? No, it was. It was in Colorado, actually. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Western Western Colorado, uh, chasing some some sage grouse. Yeah, that's a bird that I, I want to chase so bad. I just, yeah, it, it's still on my list to bag one. So it's uh, it's like thirty five hours from here. Yeah, it's a haul. It is a haul, man. <laughs> Might be better to get a plane ticket and ship some dogs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a uh, it's gonna be one that I might have to save up some some vacation for. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. For spend some spend some time there. Um. All right. Uh. Favorite bird to hunt. Bob White Quail. Bob White. All right. And then beverage of choice after a hunt. Uh, cold beer. Cold beer. All right. You a, you a light beer, dark beer, IPA? I'm a, I guess a cheap beer. Cheap <laughs> beer. Yes. I'm that's a, it. that's the a, other category. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm the a, other. A natural light. There you go. There you go. There you go, man. I'm a, I'm a course. So I don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm drinking right now. Oh, it's a root beer right now. I just finished. Some yeah, my wife, my wife had in the fridge, but anyways, um, light in hand. <laughs> there, you, there you go. That's the way, that's the way to do it, man. Well, Hunter, uh, what's, what's the best way for people to, I guess, stay in touch with you, maybe reach out if they have questions. Uh, what's, what's the best way to get in touch? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so I'm chasing Cubbies on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you reach out to me on there. Um, obviously we've got the podcast as well. So, you can reach out to us uh, on Apple or Spotify if you've got any questions or, you know, I'd be more than happy to help anybody um, any way I can, whether it's North Carolina, whether it's on a trip somewhere, um, be more than happy to get together with people and uh, share the fields. Cause that's what it's all about, you know, yeah. meeting new people and, and running bird dogs. Absolutely, man. Could not have said that better. Well, that's great. Well, Hunter, thank you so much for your time, man. It was great uh, talking with you more, getting to know your story. And uh, yeah, those those dogs here sound, sound pretty special. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Bro. Absolutely, man. Take care. Thank you too, man. And that's my conversation with Hunter Pervat of Chasing Coveys. Hunter, thank you so much, brother, for sharing your story and passion into upland hunting and just sharing what you got going on with Chasing Coveys and all your pointers, man. Uh, Those dogs sound pretty special. 
Hey guys, don't forget, leave a rating and review. You can leave one on Spotify now. Uh, they have the rating and review system, which is awesome. And also, let's get over 100 reviews on Apple Podcasts. Remember, send me your screenshot and I'll send you out a sticker. Uh, we're at 96 right now. And so once we get over 100, uh, send me your screenshot. I'll pick five people and mail you out a Upland Rookie Podcast sticker. Hey guys, don't forget, uh, put some miles on those boots and follow your favorite bird dog. Take care.